Hey there, everybody. My name is Jeremy Siskin. I'm the author of this book, playing solo jazz piano. Um, but today is not about me. Well, it kind of is. <laughs> um, I, it's about me because I'm very curious and I've made a friend. Um, and uh, I have a lot of questions. Um, so please meet uh, Nancy Reese. And my familiarity with your work, Nancy, is that you've done a lot of research and a lot of work kind of researching how the piano relates to the body or how the body relates to the piano. Um, how would you describe yourself? What is your title or what is your career? Oh, my title, my career. Well, uh, my, my career is trying my best to help everybody that has any issue with their playing, whether it's they can't get the sound that they want or they can't play at a level of difficulty that they would like to or uh, they need more information about how to practice and also injury prevention and working with very injured pianists and retraining them. That's sort of it in a nutshell. Beautiful. Um, I, I don't think I said anything like welcome. So welcome and thank you for oh. being here. <laughs> we just got thank you for right inviting in. me. I appreciate <laughs> the invitation. <laughs> Um, yeah, so do you want to tell a little bit about how you came to your work and kind of what sort of work you've done researching the body as it relates to the piano? Yes, um, sure. I, uh, I got a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in piano performance. And uh, when I was in high school, I could play really well uh, and had two fabulous teachers during that period of time. And then when I went to my, my first uh, undergraduate degree year, I had a teacher who was oh, mean, let's just put it that way. <laughs> and so my nerves just took off. And I've, I'm an introvert anyway, and have, you know, performance anxiety, and that just really did it. And she was a student of Isabella Vingerva at Curtis. And so she taught um, a lot of um, dropping the weight into the, into the wrist. And so I was with her for two years and then I left and went to Philadelphia and studied with another person, a student of Sirkin, who had a completely different approach, which was that your fingers just stay, they don't move, they're curved and they don't move up off the keys, they're just in contact all the time. So I came from all of this dropping into my wrist to this very constricted way of playing. And, um, but anyway, I need to back up a second. After my bachelor's degree, I had my first surgery uh, from playing. And then after I finished graduate school- Why did you do the surgery? Were you in a lot of pain or- I was in a lot of pain. What had happened from this, I think this particular surgery happened because I was doing all that, dropping the weight into the wrist. And so my wrist had gotten completely inflamed and there's something called, sounds terrible, but it's not, yeah. it's from overuse and misuse. It was a, a type of a, a, it looked like a ganglion, but it wasn't just a ganglion. It had, it had tentacles that went all through the bones of my wrists. And so my, basically my whole wrist was taken apart in this surgery. And that one was after graduate school. And that, that was, I was told then that I, I most likely would not have a lot of use in of this hand, not, not of my fingers, but that, that this would not move. Uh -huh. So, um, and then I'd had another, I had another surgery before all this from a horse, horse riding injury where a horse threw me into a tree and I did this. And oh. so it broke all four knuckles and it split into the bone of my fourth finger. And then another uh, surgery was on my right hand index finger, but it was the wrist surgery that really did me in. And so I didn't play for 13 years at all. And I had planned, I had wanted to go to Juilliard, but with all, you know, all this stuff happened and I thought, well, I'm, I can't play anymore. So mm -hmm. very depressing. And, um, and the good thing about it was during that period of time, I had my three children. And so that took a lot of my attention, which was good. But nevertheless, I felt like I had lost this big part of myself. Well, I had, or, you know, that, that portion. So um, at one point I started retraining with uh, 
uh, group in New York City, and I did that for 11, studied there for 11 years and taught for them. And, um, and from the first week I was there, after that first week, I had no more pain. But what, what I discovered over the 11 years was that I, I, could, I didn't have the sound that I wanted. And I started seeing weaknesses in that program. Rather so, not name them, it sounds like. <laughs> so, that's, well, totally, I mean, that's totally fine. Whatever you like. Yeah, okay. Uh, people can probably surmise that what it, the group, but, and I loved it. And I learned so much, so much, so many good things, and I'm forever mm -hmm. grateful, but mm -hmm. it has limitations. And so um, after that, I decided, okay, I've got to, I've got to figure this out on my own because mm -hmm. I can't find anybody that's going to really fix this for me. So that was in, I left there in 2002, I guess. And since then I have been working on my own and experimenting and reading and studying and, um, you know, just trying to figure out, okay, how do, what do we need to do with our body? And I, I, when I was at this Institute, I, uh, met Valentina Lasitza who is, you know, a phenomenal player. And um, I also met a man named uh, Dr. Frank Wilson, a neurologist who had, had gotten permission from Glenn Gould's family to go through all of his letters, all of his videos, everything he ever did. And um, Frank Wilson determined that most likely Glenn Gould had focal dystonia. So what had happened, uh, I learned a lot from him too, in one night of going out for drinks and dinner. Um, but what I found out from him was, were the inconsistencies uh, of how piano is taught as from a, from a neurological standpoint, like who does what, you know, what, what initiates movement and where is it initiated? Um, so all of that began this journey in the in addition to the fact that at that time I had four students with focal dystonia, which is a in, ends up being a neurological disconnect between the brain and the hand. It's what Leon Fleischer had, uh, Gary Grafman has it, and so it, it can be career ending unless yeah. you get to it soon enough. And it's thought to be incurable, which I I don't I don't uh, believe that because I've mm -hmm. worked worked with people and they are playing again. So, but, but because I had these four students at one time with that, I was trying to figure out a way for them to not get triggered by going to the piano because someone with dystonia, if they go to the piano, they can be, they can walk by one and get a, get a response like of clenching or extending fingers. And it, when they sit down to play, that, that response happens and they can't control it. So it's because this triggers them, right? I mean, it triggers all of us. It looks like it needs to be, it's the things that has buttons that need to be pushed down, right? right and that's right. how we're taught. And, and so, um, so working with over these years with people with focal dystonia and other injuries led me to, to these discoveries. And I didn't realize at the time how it was going to help me because, as I said, I was not happy with my sound um, back in you know the uh, 1990s and early 2000s. And what I discovered was the only way for them to play initially was for the for the piano to move their fingers, not the not for their fingers to jab or press down. And so the more I worked with them, the more I realized that that thinking of it that way and doing that, like, for example, like if I, if I played a key, the key could do that to my finger. Can you see my finger being moved up? Right. So it's, so it's almost like a, just a change of mindset between the finger being the one doing the action to the key doing, yes. being the one doing the action. Wow, that's like very zen. <laughs> the piano it's plays you. Zen. It's very <laughs> zen. Now that you mentioned zen, there was a book, there is a book, and I, I ask all my students to read it, and I started this way back then, and it's called Zen and the Art of Archery, and it's written by a German man named Eugene Herrigal. He and his wife went to Japan to learn zen, 
he was doing archery and she was doing uh, flower arranging. And it's a little short book, but it, it's about, oh, how can I describe it? You about getting out of your own way and not trying to hit the target. And for us, hitting the target is trying to hit, hit, and I use that word intentionally, hit the right notes, right? Hit the right keys. And the more we try to do that, the more tense we get. So, um, so anyway, that was the first portion of that insight, the fact that the fingers can be moved by the, by the key. And right. for that to happen, the action has to be farther back here because it's any kind of lever, right? If this end goes up, this end, this end is going to go down. I see. I see the distinction, you right? Because I mean? yeah, because yeah, if we do it here, it's the finger moving the key. If I'm using my my finger, but if I yeah. drop, a drop might be the wrong word. Um, so I'll, I'll allow drop you to correct me. <laughs> but if I if I allow my um my playing mechanism to kind of fall then it just it releases almost into that it's key. released well and you bring up an interesting point because okay. one of the myths that we're going to talk about today we're going to talk about eight myths of piano technique one of them is the fact that we fall that we drop into a key and we let go mm -hmm. into okay. that key but that's the that's a big problem because uh, our arms, adult arms, weigh seven to 12 pounds. Okay. And uh, it only takes uh, about 50 grams to depress a key, not to make a sound, but to press the key, 50 grams. Okay. 50 grams. So it's not much. It's less than a finger weighs on its own, on its own. So, um, so when you, when one, not you, but when one yeah. thinks of dropping, yeah. It's hard to control the speed at which one drops. Right, because we have like way too much weight if we're dropping our arm. Way like, too much weight. It doesn't seven even make sense. Arm dropping, well, I mean, seven to 12 pounds dropping into this little key that takes almost right, nothing right. to be pressed. Huh. Okay. So the kind of sound and the amount of sound that we get out of the instrument is more because we've got tons of weight. We don't need more weight, but we need speed going into the key. The faster the hammer comes up and hits the strings, the louder the sound. Mm -hmm. Now, if you drop in, I just dropped in and I got a, a zap against my finger because I just let go. Yeah, do you feel that? Yeah. Jab? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's well, like, it doesn't really hurt her, but it's, you know, a one out of 10. It hurt, kind but of you like, notice. It's unpleasant. It's, it's unpleasant. And if, if you do it for a whole concert, you know, big, right. big pieces, then yeah. And it's the same as, as uh, who did this? The, uh, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, uh -huh. right. right? It's the same thing. When you drop in, what, you're, what you feel against your fingertip is that that bottom of the key is pushing against you, right? right? right. So it's not, it's not comfortable. Not only that, but you get, you also get, I'm just going to depress this key silently. And if I drop into it this way, you hear the thud of the right. finger on the bottom of at the key bed. Which affects your sound and affects your tone. It's absolutely. It makes it very harsh and brittle often, depending on what part of the keyboard you're using. So the what you can do is you can touch your nose like this just bring your third your middle finger into okay. your nose and just touch it not pushing on it and not even curved either jeremy flatten it out okay. a little bit <laughs> okay yeah so just come in contact with it so there's not there's a little pressure on your on there but not much right now if you if you drop into the key Notice how much pressure is on, on that finger, on that middle finger, if you drop in with the third finger to any key. Yeah, a <laughs> lot, a lot. Yeah. And if you want it really loud, do it loud. Like, like it's really totally loud. drop. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of hurts. It hurts. And, and you also get that smack of the key 
of your finger smacking against the key bed. Right. So, so there's that extraneous sound. Whereas if you are on the key or slightly, yeah, you can be right on it actually. If I, if I do a preparatory motion, and we'll talk about this more in a minute, I'm gonna do this and then I'm gonna pull this up, which is gonna make this go down, right? So I'm gonna get a sound. If I don't use much, if I use sort of a slow up, What happened was I never felt more against my fingertip, even at that louder volume than I did when I touched my nose. And that's because I'm aiming all my energy, this energy of this coming up and this going down to, where, to the point of escapement. So by the time I'm on the bottom, the sound is made and I'm not pressing. I'm, I'm right, right there, I feel just this on my fingertip. Wow. And you're making a lot of sound. And making a lot of sound, right. And so the less, if you want a soft sound, it's just le less, less vigorous arm coming up, that lever system. Great. So we're already getting into good stuff, but maybe we should get into these eight points that you sent me. Of yes, we better. So that better. we don't cover okay. it all. I know you okay. and I can get to talking. Um, oh, we can talk. <laughs> We don't have any trouble having a long conversation. Yeah, but let's let's see if we can get to these eight myths. Okay. I think these are really, really interesting. Um, okay. So the number one thing that you sent me, and well, you divided them, I guess I should say first into these two parts. The first is hand parts. position myths, and the second is gravity myths. Um, right. All right. So your first hand position myth that you sent me was the myth of curved fingers. Now I'm guessing that this means that most of us are taught that our fingers yes. need to be curved. So why is that a myth and how should our fingers look at the- yeah. Our fingers should look like this. Let me get myself turned around here. Mm -hmm. um, they should look like, like I've got my right arm hanging down by my side mm -hmm. and I'm gonna bring my arm up and I'm gonna use my back muscles. We'll talk about this more in a minute, but I'm gonna use okay. my back muscles as if I'm going to start a swim stroke in the mm -hmm. pool. I love right. it. I love that metaphor. I can, you like that metaphor? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, which, but the only thing I'm not doing is I'm not getting, I'm not making any action in my forearm or my hand to like a cup in my yeah, hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're water. just kind of coming out as though you're coming on. Right. Um, this yeah. is all empty. So one big, one big thing I think about playing the piano that we have to really focus on is how should a, a given thing feel and the arm including this part of the shoulder should always should feel empty so like the elbow joint should be free the wrist joint should be free the finger joint should be free everything so when I come up here and if I'm gonna if I'm gonna curve this is kind of how I would look mm -hmm. Sort of. I mean, this is how most kids are taught, right? Yeah. But if, if you look at the um, the the pictures of Chopin's hand, even after he died, I have one on my website at the very beginning. His mm -hmm. hand looks like this. Very flat. So he, very flat. And obviously, he wasn't playing. However. When our, when our hand is flat and, you, and one can think of the palm as going all the way to this, to that joint right there. Okay. So as a, like a plate, in other words, not just going to here, like we think of it being, mm -hmm. right? Imagine it can go to here. So if you bring your arm up, like with that swimming motion from the back and put it close into the fall board and then bring okay. it back, your fingers will have their natural curl. You don't want to actually straighten out your fingers. You want they're going to be loose and, and just free. So you can and it's see it's not very I'm, curled for me at, at least. It's it's you know, I don't know. It, it, it ends up it's very hard to demonstrate like, like this, but it ends up kind of oh it's fine. That's so that's something, how, that like, something right. like this. Yes, exactly. Like your hand hangs by your side. Yeah. 
And right, kind of the same look and the, certainly the same feel of emptiness. Wow. And yeah. why is it so damaging, or why 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 should we not curl? Our fingers? Why should we not curl? Because as soon as we curl, we've tightened up all of the flexors in our arm and our hand. And if you try to if you really curl them and try to move fast, it's hard yeah, to it's do. Yeah, really hard. It's hard. Now, but let, let me ask. You know, I, I think there is like this thing as a teacher. I'm sure you've encountered this that. Yeah. You know, you get students who then have like very, you know, these flat knuckles and have no firmness to their fingers. Yeah. We do want their fingers to be firm. And is that uh, fair? That is almost fair. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Enlighten um, me. I love this. Okay. All right. So let's say, can you see better if I'm down here? Uh, yeah, I can see your hand better for sure. <laughs> yeah, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna scoot over. I'm gonna be way down. Okay. In the base area. Okay, so I'm in this in the area of C major here. Um, what we typically do is let's say we're gonna play E B C. Okay. You can see that I'm pushing each, I'm extending each finger downward. I'm pushing the key down. Um, and what happens is when I do that, this finger is releasing up and curled. Okay. So it's not just what happens when the how when the finger gets pushed pushed down into the key, it's what happens. When you don't want that sound anymore how does the finger release releases are just as if not really more important than how how the key gets played mm -hmm. so to answer your question so if we're going to be in this position um let's start with fingers two three and four okay a lot of teachers talk about the piano being underneath us which it is under our hand mm -hmm. but it's in front of our body yeah. And, and this is important because we don't have to drop down, straight down, or drop weight like on our leg. Now, I'm, dro I'm dropping weight on my leg. I'm not even adding anything. I'm just dropping with a okay. lot of um, And it makes my hand tingle even. Mm -hmm. So, but with this way of playing, what you can do is, and the reason I said, I was saying maybe a while ago to you, is that how do you keep the fingers you know, from collapsing. Yeah. And that is because if we're in this location, let's say I'm only going to play D, E, F. Okay. You notice my thumb is hanging off. Okay. Right. And you also notice that we're not having the myth of a strong. Right. Arm. Yeah, that doesn't look comfortable yeah. or healthy at all. So, <laughs> page that where you have to have this arch and this curve, this C right here. Okay. So my whole hand is tied. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But if you think of your whole palm again going to here and being uh -huh. a sponge, if you just lay your hand there and and I'm not relaxed because if I were relaxed, I'd be plopped here. So I'm okay. using my back muscles to support my upper arms and my shoulder girdle and everything. Right. Um, so if I come out and I want to play with two, three, and four, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go forward. Now, oh. watch what happens to my, did you see what my finger did? <laughs> yeah. Well, my finger didn't do it, actually. My finger mm. didn't do it. I caused it to happen to my finger by going, because my fingers are flexible, my palm is flexible. So I went forward mm. and I got this, this finger went into a posture. So oh. these two bones are stacked. Mm. So they're not going to collapse. So it, you're you're not curving your fingers almost. The piano the piano is causing those fingers to have a little bit of a curve to it. Well, I feel like I usually it, it's what's causing it is that I'm going forward, right? And I'm not I'm not letting myself slide. Mm. I'm not doing that, right? My hand is there. I've got there's a little friction against the key. Mm. 
Yeah. Oh, that's, that's really interesting. I don't think I use that gesture nearly enough. You know? Yeah. Well, if you do in one individual, now do yeah, do your middle finger again. Go to four. I'm now, starting feeling it kind of in my shoulder. You want to feel it in the bottom area, right low yeah. down in the back of your shoulder, yeah, we'll bottom lower quarter. quarter uh, okay. I, I feel it there. Shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. Is it well, fair to say that sometimes I use the language with my students to roll into it? Um, yes. Yes. That's okay. That's okay. Because the effect fine. is almost like, you know, sometimes piano teachers talk about like rolling your wrists. And that's the effect. I'm not doing it from my wrist, but that's what ends it, up happening. Is that just the important distinction? Yeah. yeah. You hit the nail on the so head. Too. Yeah. I could do this all day, but it all doesn't day. do anything. Whereas if yeah. I do it from back here, now right. I have a big muscle working for me instead exactly. of just like, oh, I'm rolling my wrist. And, so, and your wrist is, and this is key, your wrist okay. is being moved. Yes. Your wrist yes. is being moved. Like your finger is being moved. Now, sometimes, so let me ask you, I'm just curious. I have so many questions for you. We're only on myth number one. I have go, so many go questions. Go for it. Um, <laughs> sometimes I try to get students to do this gesture. Um, and like they're, they almost can't do it without also moving their finger in. Like there's this weird- Without moving what? Without, without moving... like also moving their finger in. And so they don't end oh. up getting like the, like the effects you know, their wrist doesn't end up being moved because their finger ends up being moved. So obviously uh, like I tell them, you know, to, to keep their finger where it is, but for some people it seems to be weird or difficult. It's, it's tricky. So one thing you can do when, if you're working on this with a student is, and this is kind of hard for me to do with you to be able to see, but okay. let's say I have a student's hand right here. So I might put my finger right in front of the tip of their index finger. Mm, okay. So they're not gonna slide. Okay. But they have to they have to allow that that action that's coming from way back in their back to change the shape and posture of that finger so it's all the responsibility of these back muscles shoulder blade muscles shoulder girdle muscles uh -huh. all those. so uh and then you, uh, the other problem that i sometimes yeah. have with students because i was actually working on this motion with a student the other day and he's yeah. like way overdoing it. <laughs> you know, it was like, oh, I'm going, you know, he couldn't play anything without just exaggerating it to this like crazy degree. So would that also be solved by maybe putting the, your finger in front of their finger? Yes. And it's not much that they have to do. All they yeah. have to do is just move their, their uh, collarbone forward. You can think yeah. of it in two ways. The collarbone and the shoulder blades are connected. And if one goes forward, everything's going to go forward. Um, yeah, I think sometimes it's just so hard for, for students to like think about things that they can't visualize. So it's like, oh, I'm doing it. Can you tell that I'm doing it? Oh, I'm it? doing it. Like I'm, I yeah. did it. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, but I love it. I can totally feel that here. And that feels yes. different. Like, well, like we did the other day where you can feel if you think of, of having a band an exercise band around your upper arms yes. and open against that. Those muscles are the ones I can totally, that you can feel, totally feel it right there. Yep. To it. But, but we Love don't that. have, we do this, we do movements all day long. We don't ever have to think about what happens in our back or, you know, anywhere really. Yeah. Um, it's just automatic. But, but what happens with this instrument being the trigger is that it gets us doing things that are right. not healthy and, and don't give good sounds. Okay, so, um, all right, a couple follow-up questions. Okay. So, are you advocating for keeping the thumb off of the keys when we're in this ah. position? Were you taught to keep them off? Because I would, you know, I would move my hand inwards and play between right. the black keys. Is that yes. good, bad? That that's not bad, but let's okay. talk about now. You brought up another thing about the thumb. The thumb okay. is crucial to uh, freedom in playing and sound because if if one keeps one's thumb right next to the hand, mm -hmm. like just 
but just put your hand in that position and keep your thumb there. Now, okay. play a bit of play, just do that much. Uh huh. Do your thumb under though. Well, no, don't you don't have to go ahead. Oh, do, do, the whole, do the whole pattern. One, no, go just do the pattern. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Okay. Now you can see your your hand on your keyboard, right? Yep. On your screen. Okay. Yeah. Do it one more time, and then when you get to your fifth finger, don't go beyond that. Just freeze there. Okay. Okay. Freeze right there. So now look at your look at your hand. You see I'm how a little bit. It's curved. I call that curved. Okay. Okay. Now, if I do it, what's happening? You know, I was talking a minute oh. ago about releases. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yours is not curved at all. Not at all. No, not curved at all. If I go for, if I play two, a little forward, and then I go forward to three, I'm going to actively release my two that direction forward and when you say actively release you mean uh -huh. you're intentionally I'm, moving I'm, it i'm i'm kind you're of flick, you're flicking it, i'm flicking yes i'm letting i'm allowing it to go forward in other words i'm Whoa. not holding it here i'm not releasing it up in that shape you're in the posture it to go forward. Just in. yeah and you're doing that with each of your fingers including your five uh sometimes forward on five it depends it depends on the passage which we'll talk about in a minute that's okay. the reason I'm i want to try this though so okay so. yeah try this okay. oh that's so through. weird <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> i went too fast i went too fast i got excited okay, don't go so fast just do okay. bum, bum. yes now you don't have you're not going to really open your hand you're just gonna okay. it's it's the smallest, um, it's almost like there's a tiny piece of dust here on the keys. Or in my case, there might be a cat hair or a dog hair. <laughs> it's just this, it's, it's the lightest little flicking dust that you could possibly wow, come up with. feels so weird. I know. I totally don't use that motion in my playing. You don't what? I don't use that motion in my playing. Well, you do sometimes because I've watched you really. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll get the, you know, wrist rolled forward, yeah. but that releasing the finger forward, that I don't do. That's a new that feeling. Don't do. Well, you yeah. know how we talked about when a fifth finger curls while the other four are playing? It can kind of okay. can curl kind of like that. Totally. Yes. Totally. I'm hoping you solve that problem for me. <laughs> Well, this solves it. This would solve this problem because the reason this happens to anybody is because one or more of the other fingers are extending downwards. And you can test this. Like if you have your hand out like this, if you, if I extend my middle finger, watch what's going to happen. Right now. For yeah, mine totally just goes, <laughs> I think you just go it goes right up. up. Mine, mine does two, and my two goes up if I really extend three vigorously. But a lot of times when people play their fourth finger, they're trying to push it down, and that will pull, that will cause the fifth finger to curl upwards. So if, wow. if you extend, extend down your four, it's a little tricky to do it just on your hand, but if you do it on the keyboard. <laughs> Yeah, there's a reaction. I think it's I've gotten reaction. relatively good at controlling it through years uh -huh. of piano study, but there's definitely there's a, a reflex. There's a, there. It's just a reflex. And it is, it's just a reflex. That's all it is. It's no big deal, but it's caused by other some other finger extending downward. Mm -hmm. That's it. So with this though, mm -hmm. fingers don't extend mm -hmm. downward. My fingers are being right, moved. Outwards. Yeah. And when I release, I'm allowing them, when I go from D to E, I'm allowing that finger to release forward. So just go from two to three. Yeah, don't try, oh, one thing, Jeremy, wait till, you're, wait till you start to play the E and release, then release the D. Oh, okay. There. There you go. 
Wow. Wow. <laughs> My... <laughs> is, your, is your brain on fire? Okay, I love this. I love this. I love this. I love this. Um, I'm going to practice it. But I have to ask, are there not also times if I was playing that same pattern where I would move inwards rather than outwards? Where you would come this way? Well, and you, right now you're just playing fingers individually, non legato, right? So just do that. So it feels the same as what I did with legato. No, no, no. But I was trying to say. To oh, your, sorry. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm also processing I, right I, now. So my okay, question. What did I miss? No, no, no. I'm. So what I'm saying. So you've shown me. Right. Um, I'm, the hand is coming here. The wrist is roll. Or, uh, I'm catching myself using. The wrist is being pushed towards. Yeah. Towards the fall. Right. Are there times when the wrist will not be pulled away from the fall board? There are many times okay. when, when, and, and when you think of the wrist, remember that the wrist is being moved by something way farther back. So for example, when you play uh, any interval with the thumb, it's going to come this direction or octaves, that kind of a thing. That's that fold that we talked about last time, um, which, brings, which brings this back like that. And when you fold here, that pulls this, the end of this bone up. I'm not moving my quote unquote wrist because really the wrist is, are the, the eight bones that are in, in your hand, in the back of your palm. So I'm, what I'm thinking of again is this spongy thing, which we didn't, we kind of, I kind of glossed over a while ago. So if I, my hand is here in its natural position, if mm -hmm. I take my other hand and I depress my middle knuckle, see what happens? What are you doing? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you're your, your, your third finger middle knuckle. My third finger, middle knuckle, my hand's just in its natural position. Yeah. I, I put my arm up here to the fall board. I brought it back. So that has uncurled my fingers. What slight bit they would be curled if they were hanging by my side. That's the mm -hmm. whole point of doing that and bringing it back. Now, there, there's my quote unquote bridge, oh, right? I see. I see. Uh, but instead of holding this as as a stable point, which is how it's usually taught, keep stability uh -huh. in the bridge, which means all of a sudden your whole palm is tense. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have it tense and you just barely touch, like you've got your wet kitchen sponge laying out uh -huh. on the table and, and you just touch it, it's gonna spring right back. See my hand springing back? As yeah. As soon as I turn loose? Yeah. Okay. Now, if I don't do it by touching my hand, I can make, I can do that to my own hand. And I see your finger is kind of jut jutting forward or they're being made exactly, to jut Exactly, because they're being opened. They're being opened by what I'm doing with my palm. Okay. Now this has all kinds of uh, uses for everything, for playing a scale. Like, Uh, I see. So you're going from that first position to more open. Yeah. Now, and let's because of this, because we have this marvelous flexible palm, like a sponge, if we use that to our advantage, which a lot of people do naturally, um, one person very famous uh, is Daniil Trifonoff. Daniil Trifonoff says your hand must be as flexible as an octopus. Uh -huh. He's Love absolutely it. right about that. But I suspect he has eight fingers on each hand. <laughs> well, it's like he does, but it's he because, sure yeah, I, yeah I, I've, I've got this really interesting video of him playing at the Yellow Lounge in England. Okay. And I thought about bringing it up here today because um, it's fascinating. He's playing in a t-shirt, just okay. a regular t-shirt. And where the camera is, you can see what's going on in his back so clearly. Wow. Uh, 
So that would be something fun. I'll have to send you the link to that. But anyway, um, yeah, his hand, his palms and hands are so flexible. Like, and that's, and that's what we need. That, yeah, that is not a way that I'm used to my um, moving. I feel like. Nobody is, Jeremy. I, <laughs> I, have yet to meet, I have yet to meet anybody that has been taught that this is an option. It would be very frowned upon, you know, it, by traditional teachers. So when you do that, make sure that when you do that, that you're, that you're on a surface, okay. like your keys. Right, now, and also don't, don't uh, exaggerate the straightening out of your fingers. Right now, you've, you've raised your wrist and you've lowered your knuckles. You wanna just bring your hand up like it would hang by your side so okay. that you have knuckles. All right, well, I'm gonna stand for this. So okay, because otherwise exactly I feel like right. I'm at the wrong. Okay. Yeah. See how it springs right back? Yeah. Yeah. And so it would be it's a miracle. Quote, quote, wrong if I were holding it. Yes, and hold it, it. Try to push it down. You can't. Yeah, it's, it's not going like anywhere. Concrete. It's really right. like a brick. But it also shouldn't be collapsing. <laughs> right. There needs to be well, some, you know, a little yeah, bit of resistance so that it springs back up. It, spring, it has to spring back up. You have your hand has to be in its natural position. You can't be straightening out fingers or, or pulling them apart or anything. I mean, you can, but it's harder to feel. But with octaves, I'm going to do slow octaves. Oh. Oh. That looks so different That's than mine. <laughs> Right, I feel like my hand, like I'm really trying to keep my hand controlled so that I, you know, get the distance right. You know, I can already yeah. feel myself getting tense here. Um, of course. But you're of going. Course. No, tell me how you're doing it. I don't know. So what I'm doing, doing it. is, I'm if I'm going to play a C octave, I'm hanging out with my thumb around D and my fifth finger around B, around a sixth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if I'm gonna, if I want to play that C octave, as you and I talked about last time, yeah. we're, I'm gonna have a preparatory motion, right? Which is gonna be like an inhale, like that kind of a thing. So this is coming up a little. And when and you then, say up, so sorry. Well, when, when you no, say no. up, is it here? Is it out? Or what? It's right now. It's no. It's not out. It's just, I'm taking a deep breath in. So take a deep breath in. Now you see how it came up when you look at your... Yeah, yeah. this is great because right? I got these stripes here. So I've got to move these stripes above these stripes. <laughs> That's right, you're wearing the perfect shirt today, Jeremy. <laughs> I wish I could <laughs> say I'd planned it. <laughs> I should have told you to wear a black and white striped shirt. Why did I not think of that? Um, so if, I'm, if I move my arm like this, now, I'm doing a combination of the fold. You know how we talked about the gooseneck, okay. right? Mm -hmm. There's my gooseneck right there, the head and the neck of the goose. But now I'm, I've laid my, my hand up there just naturally. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fold here slightly. Now, when I want to play, I'm going to open my hand slightly by opening my palm and thinking from opening back here, this part. It's, it's, there's yes. kind of an op opening. There's gesture. an opening. Yeah. Ooh. And the, what's happening is. Part of it? That's nuts. Yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> love this. <laughs> you do? It's, it's almost like a, if I were going to like throw dice in a, or no, it's, it's like the, uh, the salt, remember Salt Bang? Do you remember the whole thing where that guy's like those fancy salts? Yes. Yes. Like I'm salting, yeah. salting my dish. Salting your dish. That's exactly what it is. Oh. You would be salting with your salt would be in palm, right? Because it's it's this. Like I'm I'm gonna do it here because you can really see it. So here's my my goose neck, goose head. Uh -huh. Okay. When I fold, this gets tossed back this way. Yeah. 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 
Now yours is still kind of wanting to do this and come and end up here. Yeah. Which which is fine if you're just playing one octave, but if you're play, if you've got octaves in succession. So when I play this one, I'm letting my hand go back to that sixth distance before I play the D's. Now I'm what I'm here's what I'm going to do as I get ready to play the second octave. I'm going to expand right in here. So now I'm going to expand and then I'm going to fold. Sorry, I missed it. <laughs> yes. I'm getting a different sound than I usually get. Like the you character are. of the sound has changed. Like I, I'm, used, I'm used to hearing that, and now, now I'm, I'm well, going to play louder. If you want it louder, you have to fold quicker. <laughs> now, one thing, Jeremy. Yeah. Don't fold until you have opened your palm and your on your thumb is on its key. Oh. This is complicated. Uh, well, no, I got this, I got this, I got this, I got this. I it, it. Is. it feels complicated, but it doesn't take long to get it. Oh, it's just I'm new. Fine. It's oh. just new. Yeah, it's not harder, it's just new. I really want to cheat and just be expanded to the octave already, but I'm not going to do it. Okay. It's, there's like a little, there's like a weird leap of faith of not starting with that octave already preset. Yes. So how much of the sound? Oh, that was already like, way better, Jeremy. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Maybe this is a silly question, but how much of the sound is being created by the hand motion, by this expansion of the palm, versus how much is being created by the folding motion? The folding part. And, it's a combination. It really is a combination. Like if I want to do faster, it's a probably a, you're going to have a more easier time. Uh -huh. more easy time by doing it a little quicker like do three in a row like get your get your prep going and, yuck, 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 and do that much <laughs> <laughs> i can totally do that my old way right um, of course you can oh that was, that was cool yeah and your your hand is expanding your palm is expanding between each and every one of those contracting between each one it's not expanding it's contracting like when i do this one all right all right. I'm, right now when i if i play it fast it's very slight but it's i'm i'm not holding it in that for what mitch what what for me yeah, would be an octave. Holding an octave because that's going to be tense. Right. I would be tense. So this way I'm not tense. I could I could play that play fast octaves all day and not get tired. Yeah. Now you have to be using this part too. We haven't gotten into that yet for octaves. But let me let me ask you something about that folding motion. So when yeah. I try to fold, like sometimes I get the impulse to do this. Is that folding or is that something different? Because you're talking that's about folding. folding. That's not folding. That's the folding not, has to be. Not, this is folding. folding. Is, keep keep your upper arm just where it is. Drop your what arm you, by your side. Okay. Okay. Now, from there, fold. Okay. All right. Now, now unfold enough that you would be like level with the imaginary keyboard. Now, from there. Keep my hand up. No, keep your hand hanging loose because okay. your wrist is going to be empty. The thing about it is when you're at the, at the keyboard, of course, the keys are keeping your wrist from doing that, right? Mm -hmm. But so now fold, 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 fold. Mm -hmm. Now loosen your wrist because here's what I'm seeing. I'm, I'm going to do what you just did. Okay. So oh, this, 
it was stiff. Yeah. It feels because loose. If, if you does it feel loose? Okay, do it faster and let's see if your hand shakes. It should. Ah, here's what has to, here's the other thing that has to happen. So okay. what happens when okay. I do this? I'm really I'm making sure that my hand is getting tossed around. Yeah. It looks almost like you're throwing a ball. It is very much like throwing a ball. Yeah. Uh huh. Now, but, when, except you're throwing the ball as you come up, as you fall in. Uh, I'm coming up, and then I would be throwing the ball. And then you'd be throwing the throw. ball to play the next fold octave. And throw. Yeah, fold and throw. Now, add, add using those back muscles that we've talked about in the past. Can you can you say more about that, uh, both to review for me and for anybody who might be watching that? Yeah. So when you were talking a while ago about feeling these muscles in here, the ones that attach to your shoulder blades, where where we expand our shoulder blades, right? Right. So we talked about doing that like exercise band. Yeah, like you're exercising, trying to work your lat latissimus muscles, okay. those muscles that go around your rib cage that are that connect to your your humerus bone, your upper arm bone. So let, if it maybe it's like also like a tennis tennis swing. There's a prep in the opposite direction that you want to mm -hmm. swing, right? right? And then there's a follow through. You, you don't hold your wrist like this and hit the ball like yeah, solid yeah. rock forearm. Yeah, there's yeah. a give in there and a follow through. Okay. And so those are the going. muscles that you want me to activate. Yes. And when you say back muscles, those are the ones you're referring to? Because I think of these as like being on my side rather than on my back. Well, just... and they, these back muscles, these latissimus muscles do go around your rib cage. Mm -hmm. But they not have, to do they... where I feel them is around my rib cage. Here. No, you don't you no. wouldn't feel them. Okay. No. Sorry, I'm I'm yeah. saying the wrong thing. Well, no, you know, you're not saying it wrong. The way the only way you're gonna feel them is if you do this. Yeah. And you're also okay. going to feel that that work up in right in here, this whole outer edge of your armpit. Yes. Okay, because those muscles attach up into here as well. So yeah, so those are the ones we're talking about. But but if I'm just playing this, if I'm just playing that, I'm I'm using these a little, but it's it's very little. It's not much. Very subtle. Yeah. Very but you want to feel them kind of. Burning is the wrong word, but activated. Just barely activated. Just barely activated. Yeah. Now, if you're going to play the beginning of the Tchaikovsky piano concerto, now that's a different deal. Because, should we talk about that? Um, big let's, let's hold. Let's, okay. Let's, okay. Okay. I want to get these octaves right. Okay. So now <laughs> I think I understand the folding. I yes. need to work on the hand position, and I'm thinking about keeping this just barely activated. Yes, thinking, barely activated. That feels yes. pretty good. That's Is that right. the right idea? That's, a, that's absolutely the right idea. You, no, no, you, are, no, you are letting yourself come back farther than you need to. Okay. See, if I, when I, after I do this fold, now I'm here. In other words, I'm not falling and coming mm, back uh -huh. that far. Right. Yeah. I think I have this impulse of my elbow to like. Yeah. Do and that there are times when you're gonna when you are gonna bring your elbows back. But if you're this playing is not, this is just the fold. This is the this is the fold. If you do big chords, it'll be a little different. Yes, there you go, Jeremy. It's a cool sound. I don't get that sound out of the piano. Um, you don't? Not usually. <laughs> I've it, heard sound, it sounds that. different. It sounds very different than how I would play on the kids usually. Um, well, got a more yeah. kind of focus and more of a like beautiful ping to it rather than like a controlled yes, well, downward. So now so do it do it quicker and more vigorously with these muscles I'll, and I'll try. <laughs> like that. Boom, boom, boom. Make it quick and abrupt. That was more, right? You had more sound. 
Yeah. Now, yeah, if, you sure. want it more, if you want it more body, mm -hmm. you're gonna, you can add a little bit of a kind of a plucky feeling in your fingertip. Like boom, boom, boom. So you're expanding your palm, but your fingers are going in a little bit. As I, that's, as that's I start. That's very playing. unintuitive. So they're kind of <laughs> moving in opposite direction. towards the end <laughs> you did i loved that last one that yeah, last I did one too. you nailed it yeah it takes wow. a little bit of use too you've got a bunch um, of levers so just to think about how complicated this is and like not to make make it that it's hard but your palm let me just make sure i got this right your palms expanding mm -hmm. your fingers you got maybe would it be correct to say it's the first knuckle of those fingers kind of going inwards? Kind of, but think of it more as your palm. Think of it as your palm, not your fingers pulling in themselves. You like you get a, you can, there's my palm. Now my fingers are hanging. Uh, yeah. One second. Now this is if I froze in the air, right? Now I'm going to go this direction as I do. My fingers are open. Now I'm going to. Ah, I see. So it's not that they're going in opposite directions. It's that you're going out and then you're bringing it back in. Exactly. Ah, okay. Thank you for clarifying. I. I uh... That's okay. And then at the same time, you're folding. I was almost doing my rolling motion. You're folding. Here. Oh yeah. There you go. And you're feeling just slightly you feel aggravated. Yes. Well, I'm starting to feel it. You, go, um, you are, Jeremy, because yeah. what I just saw there, when you had your hand here, you could really see, mm -hmm. I could see that uh -huh. you were activating those muscles that go around here. Wow. Yeah. So it's, yeah, you got it. Amazing. Well, Nancy, it's like been more than an hour. I I swear Has I could talk already? to you. I could talk oh to you God, forever. I know, like it's already <laughs> noon here in California. Um, here, I, here, only up to eight. one minute. <laughs> <laughs> one um, minute. What do you want to I, I feel like you know now that you said that my octaves are, are brilliant. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, like this might be a good time to hit pause on the conversation. Yes. Okay. Um, I I have a lot to process myself, and if you're willing, I don't want to manip I don't want to monopolize your time. But man, I would love to have you back and get to these other seven minutes and maybe interrupt you a little bit less. Although I can't make any guarantees. <laughs> <laughs> no, being interrupted is a good thing because otherwise it's just going to roll right right off of you you there's know so many because, little details there's so many details but yeah. and i don't want to make it overwhelming for people because yeah. honestly it really isn't i mean it takes time it takes time yeah. to do anytime you're going to change the way you move and jeremy here's the thing you've got killer octaves you don't have to change <laughs> anything well, the only reason anybody would want to change is if they can't play them as fast as they want, or if they're uncomfortable, or if they're tight, or if they miss a lot of notes. Those, those. Well, I, I do get tight though. Um, I do get tired, you know, tired. I mean, if I have a more extended passage or something, even last night I was playing a concert and I started noticing, like, oh wow, I'm like really cold. And of course, like you know, some of that is nerves, but some of that too sure. is if I knew exactly what I was doing, you know, yes. in these detailed ways, then I would feel like I have a better sense of, you know, how to relax it and still get all the intensity and sound that I want. Um, yes. I can, I can mostly get there, you know, I, you, we've talked about who I studied with and I, you know, I've had good guidance, but to get uh, yes. into these Phenomenal. details on that, on that granular level, like, uh -huh. I think I could fix some more of my own problems. And as a teacher, I could really go further fixing some That's of the students' the thing, problems. Because it gives you so many diagnostic tools that you, totally. you know what to look for and what to do. To fix and I it. love That's working with you because like even over Zoom, oh. you see immediately <laughs> when oh. I'm you know overcompensating or using the wrong muscle. So it's just like I'm yeah, I'm so fascinated and grateful. Oh, I'm um, glad. I'm glad. Well, I appreciate you having me on because there's yeah. nothing I'd rather talk about than this because <laughs> I love it. I love it. It works. I, I can tell it shows. Happen. 
Oh, yeah. good. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, well, I'm going to let you go with a ton of gratitude and I'm going to direct people in the comments to your website. Um, but okay. is it just nancyreese.com? No, it's reesepianotechnique.com. No. Great. And it's reese, R-E-E-S-E, pianotechnique.com. Yes. All right. Okay. Hopefully we'll get to some new visitors over there. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Yeah. And we can you. do this as many see you, times as you want. <laughs> oh, you're going to regret that. Anytime. You're going to see a lot of me. <laughs> Oh, I good. I would love that. Nothing I'd love more. Have a great day, Jeremy. Yeah, Thanks have a again. great one, Nancy. Okay, bye-bye.